Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. It is uh, 8, 10 a.m. I am sacrificing prime working in the yard before it gets too hot out uh, hours, or at least this hour. This is like the last hour where it's bearable. But uh, I just can't stop thinking about this. So before I go, uh, this will, why does it say funding? Oh, it's a draft campaign. Okay, so I'm gonna launch this later today. This is Capture or Kill. You might remember me mentioning this. This is a book that's been done for years. Years, except for the lettering. And, um, well, I'll explain when I do the pitch video later today. But that's this, uh, I'm almost done building this. And then I've still got the Splato 2024, Possible Stars 2, Job Records Forever, First Kill. These books have been printed, but they haven't arrived and been inducted at the Fulfillment Center yet, so there's still time to uh, order them. And uh, I am watching, what is this, Dark City again? Uh, a Dead End, yes, Mr. Wall. And uh, I'm on episode three of Batman Caped Crusader. So um, I've been getting pretty frustrated with, uh, I actually, got, I got, a message from an actual birthday party clown like professional and he was like can you stop using this phrase and I think I might need to stop mainly because I have to explain it like you say purse puppy people get it even divorced dentist which is pretty vague people get it it's like oh I understand what he's talking about but like every day, I, I think birthday party clown is just an absolute winner. But it might, it's kind of like cancel pig. Like cancel pig was kind of popular for a while, but it, I don't know. It just seems kind of off. Like I just revert to SJW. I can never say wokey though. That sounds so dumb. The wokies are up to this again. Anyway, I've been very uh, frustrated with the anti wokies. And that's, I mean, I think I've made myself clear. In that regards and uh, then this shit happened <laughs> um, so this guy don't contact him I don't know who the fuck this is but he typed this absolutely unhinged rant about Gary Nerdrotic uh, and uh, let's just start going through it <laughs> because it's a uh, it's it it's insane, but it's a good jumping off point. So um, this is Knitter, Knitter. This is Twitter for people who don't have, no, it's, yeah, it's Twitter for people who don't have Twitter. So um, I can't really see, well, I can't see entire threads, but if I go to Knitter, and this used to, like this was, it got taken down, but I guess it's back now. Um, so this is how I'm seeing a Twitter post on Knitter. Um, so <laughs> Nerdrotic is a piece of shit that we've allowed to operate amongst us for far too long. A thread. And then he does the thread emoji. Um, it also really bothers me that he's got, why is this image a full image, but this one is like cropped? Like you just get like a square right here and then it, why? why? So, um, before I focus my attention solely on this garbage, let us first focus our attention on the explanation of what it is he and his little... <laughs> Why do they talk like Skeletor? He and his little grifter friends do. Uh, so basically this guy says that they form a narrative, which is... I've had threads written about me a fucking million times and they all they always do all this same shit um, so they're gonna cherry pick quotes they're gonna take jokes out of context they're gonna pretend that things that are clearly jokes aren't jokes and it can't just be like this is how I feel about the nerd crew whatever they call themselves I find them annoying <laughs> it's, it's not it's not a, a friendship killer but I basically feel like this if I if your content changes or I change and I'm like, hey, no harm, no foul. I just want to do my own thing and avoid your content. I feel like I should be able to do that 
but this year I can't do it. Uh, a lot of these channels uh, had giant jumps in popularity this year. And a few months ago, my comments went from just like how they had always been to being nothing but catchphrases, just canned phrases from these channels. And it was like invasion of the body snatchers. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And so various uh, 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 ways I expressed my displeasure with this. And basically, I just started calling people. I was like, look, I can't take this shit. It's so fuck. I want to have conversations. I don't want to just have people repeat canned phrases from other channels. Um, and then the other one is some of these people have changed and become quite popular. But what they do is very annoying to me. Like it, it literally, I have a physical reaction that is negative. Like it rattles my nerves. So I'm like, okay, no harm, no foul. I'm just going to stay away from this person. I'm not going to go to their channel. But they're on every channel. And I don't mean like a guest, like, like several different channels every day. I can't get away from them. So I'm a little upset. Um, but uh, the, these, these guys criticizing them are just nuts. Um, and it hasn't even gotten really crazy yet. So uh, that's... <laughs> Why did they always talk like characters? That's right, folks. They sell you outrage and anger. This is what they do. They make mountains out of molehills to capitalize on an insignificant frustration their target demographic might be feeling and heighten the issue rather than tame it. Well, this shit absolutely does bother me. In fact, I did uh, a Nestle Crunch cat uh, meme video about this just yesterday. Um, but it's in the realm of annoying, not evil. Um, so uh, the thing is, a lot of these people, not all of them, um, and some of them I genuinely do not like, but a lot of these people are my friends. And not like, oh, we're friendly. I mean, we talk in DMs every day about just regular shit. We both understand that we don't agree on some subjects and we just talk about other things. Like, it's not a friendship killer. Um, and I mean, like, just several times a day, several of these people, we just chit chat. Um, but yes, this shit does. <laughs> And so I talk to them. So sometimes I'll talk. I'll be like, oh, geez, come on. Uh, and they're like, hey, man, I don't like doing this shit either. But it's the algorithm. If I don't do this, I don't get promoted. And is it really like that bad that I use bright colors and like tear emojis? It's like, yeah, it's, I, I, I get it. And we just kind of move on. But it doesn't, it doesn't know the shit out of me. <laughs> um, so, so this guy goes on. No, this won't be news to you. I realize that. Nerd Roddick has an obsession with the concept that anyone who isn't straight, white, or male might make an appearance or, God forbid, lead a solo project. So one of the, and I've referenced a scene from G.I. Joe uh, where there's Storm Shadow and uh, Snake Eyes and they're training at the Arashikage Dojo. And at one point, Storm Shadow practices archery on squirrels and snake guys just isn't into that and they say you know a wedge was driven between friends so there's certain things they've done for instance i felt like we were all on the same page years ago that we didn't have any issue with women being leads or women being creators it's just when they were hired because they were women and they weren't talented. It seems that has changed with the um, concept of the girl boss being, ex uh, uh, what is it, ex exaggerated to basically include like any woman being good at anything. <laughs> For example, Furiosa or um, uh, I'm blanking on her name, the lesbian detective in uh, Montoya in uh, Batman. Um, it seems to be that now they're kind of like, we, we just don't want this. We, and there's, there's some rewriting of history 
of, oh, no, we never like Furiosa. Oh, we never... I feel like they are playing games to some extent. But again, playing games is one thing. Being evil is another thing. Um, so, uh, so he says, what the heck is going on? He says, uh, but of course he has praise for the MCU, but only when it involves movies where the main protagonist is white, male, and straight. Marvel has only experienced one failure in its entire history as lackluster as some of the box office was in Phase 4, with two movies crossing $1 billion. Is this legible? If I click on it? Maybe not. Maybe? Okay. All right, so I'm actually watching Eternals. It's slow, but it's okay. It's not terrible. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's way down there compared to their... Uh, greatest hits and um, did I lose it no there it is so he says he's just generally a racist well time 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 out time out time out what is generally a racist I feel like racist is something that you are or you aren't like what <laughs> and even just is a qualifier as well so there's two qualifiers in that short sentence he's just generally a racist okay that sounds like he isn't a racist but you want him to be um, so much so that at this point he should honestly just come out and admit that he's a white what the f he, he should come out and admit that he's a white supremacist what the fuck Never mind, he's racially charged comments about Echo. Check this comment out that he jokes won't make it in. Spoiler, it made it in. So, I I don't know what this is, I've never listened to this. What there wasn't a lot of was men. Uh, not sure what happened to all the dudes in Wakanda. Maybe they went off to get a pack of Salem's and never came back. Oh shit, I don't know if I'll keep that one in. That's like a mildly edgy dad joke. Is, is this your case? Because as you can see here, he's halfway through his case and all you got him on is mildly edgy. I don't even know if that's mildly edgy. Um, <laughs> this is where he gets like real skeletal. He's like, he's talking to Gary. You're just a little boy with a camera and a microphone. Take that away. And what are you? Racist, homo transphobic misogynist <laughs> what you went from zero to 60 real damn fast so here's a tweet from a few months ago nerd Roddick said Elon said he was fixing it let's dead name test Ellen Page Bruce Jenner Star Wars Marvel I don't exactly get the joke of saying Star Wars and Marvel are you supposed to call him something different oh is the joke that they're dead that guy's not really a great joke. But, um, yeah, this is this is just, like, slightly edgy dad on Facebook humor. This one, I just found out that this was, like, a major controversy. He said he had a, uh, it was about Blue Beetle, and he said, like, let's talk about it. Like, let's talk about it about it but he said taco I mean I wouldn't say this is funny <laughs> this is like like really old like 1990s humor it's like oh he's Hispanic and they got this maid lady in a taco is it funny no is it racist no uh, this one is uh, this one I actually know the origin of this so this is this came from a true event where there was a plane from China that crashed at SFO and then some jokester called and he was saying like I, I think I don't think it was dead people I think he said the pilots names and it was all these joke Asian names like some Ting Wong and like newscasters in the Bay Area with a very high Asian population just repeated it like they didn't notice to the joke was not that these 
joke Asian names are funny. They're not. The joke was that in the most Asian part of the country, newscasters saw this and thought it was a real name. And they actually said it live on the news. Um, so, uh, Shang-Chi 2 cancellation rumors addressed by MCU star. And then Nerd Roddick said some Ting Wong. If, you, if you're not from the Bay Area or you didn't live in the Bay Area at the time, it's not like you would say, oh, that's racist. You're just like, oh, that's kind of a lame joke. Like, you wouldn't get the reference. Um, so he's almost done. And, oh, is that Art Carfunkel? Um, he's, oh, God. Is it possible to type with a lisp? He's such a problematic person that his whereabouts on January 6th could be brought into question. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess he was in no less than three live streams like every other day, <laughs> which would require him being in his uh, home studio. He's such a problematic person that his whereabouts on January 6th could be brought into question. And I bet you wouldn't blink a fucking eye. <laughs> this guy doesn't... No, he thinks with a lisp. This Elon this this Elon Musk nutsack liquor interacts with people currently advocating for a civil war if the election is once again quote stolen. Um, so I don't even know what this is. Oh, this is when they just go through your feed and they find like you talk to a person who talked to a person who's a bad person. Therefore, you're a bad person. These are just neutral. President Biden said, I'm not going to shut down the country. I'm going to shut down. I'm not going to shut down the economy. And then this guy says, how's that working out for you, Joe Biden? And Gary responded with a Ouija board. Like, what? What is this? Am I supposed to know who these people are? Um, this guy, Gary, is stuck in a never-ending circle jerk literally built on the back of shitting on suppressed voices and oppressed minorities. If it's not a straight white man, he don't want it. In fact, he'll dedicate his time to shitting on it for two, <laughs> for two weeks. That's a very specific amount of time. <laughs> it's so oddly specific. Um... So then he adds him. He goes, I'll leave this thread off with this. And it's directly at you, Nerd Roddick. Joking about or attempting to further suppress an already suppressed voice is a fucking disgusting way to spend your free time. You are a grifter. It's all you will ever, it's all you ever will be. You may have sobered up. <sighs> what, what, is, what is the point of bringing that up? You may have sobered up, and I've seen firsthand how difficult that is, and must have been to you. But you've relapsed in addiction. You're addicted to hatred and negativity. You're addicted to the engagement it brings that furthers your hatred and negativity. And what's worse, you know what you're doing, which means you know the harm it causes, not just on the people you're shitting on, but the fandom as a whole. We're the ones who have to deal with your dumbass fans fucking up our vibe. <laughs> Again, don't contact this person. Oh, God, that is so silly. Um, I think this is his crescendo. You are filth. If I saw you, if I saw you in real life, I'd Spit at your feet. I genuinely hope you educate yourself. <laughs> Nobody talks like this. Because the way I see it currently, you aren't worth the cloud space they use to keep your videos up. Oh, snap! This comment alone encapsulates how garbage you are. Fuck you. <laughs> so, um, on... January 9th, huh, isn't 9 just 6 upside down? Interesting. He types, 
After having reservations about Echo, Disney Marvel is moving forward with their big gamble. It's Native American jokes. I didn't get it until right now. I saw this on my phone, and I was like, "What is? I don't understand. What's the, what's the problem? Oh, reservations. This is like a Flintstones joke. This is like a 1950s Flintstones joke. Is it funny? Eh. It's a little amusing. I actually didn't get the joke until right now. Uh, gamble because casinos on re reservation. It's it's fine. The idea that you want to like just destroy this guy, and like this is all you've got. Come on. Uh, <laughs> this is so funny. So right after just a complete nothing burger with extra nothing cheese, uh, he says. P.S. This isn't even the worst of it. I just shared what's actually fucking digestible. P.P.S. I think you meant to say P.M.S. Had to hide a bunch of checkmark replies because they were stacking on top of the thread itself. So no, they haven't been hidden to not be seen. They've been hidden so the thread can be seen. So, let's see if this works. I think this is just going to be the responses. <laughs> I ain't reading all that. <laughs> okay, so uh, some responses. I'm guessing there's a bunch. This is something that is done to uh, get attention. Um, uh, when I was getting very, very frustrated uh, last week, I went to see if there was any like criticism of birthday party clowns as I call them for now I need a better name apparently um, and it was all stuff like this like they might have one or two good points but then they're just like and he's a Nazi and he knows this person who's a white supremacist and they're a Nazi and it's like what is this 2018 like that's all you can say there are things to criticize specifically I think about one thing Okay, so something's happening and you're going in a direction. Let's extrapolate from there. If basically every movie, streaming show, animated show, video game, and comic is terrible, are people just going to stick around forever? I feel like after a while, they're just going to leave these things. And I produce comics. Like, I want people to like comics. I roast a lot of comics. I also review comics that are quite good. This X-Force uh, number one, written by Jeffrey Thorne. I think it's like the first thing I ever liked by him. It was really, really good. It wasn't great, but it was good. There were some modern day isms, like you have to have the lesbian couple, and of course they have to dress like this. Um, uh, but there's just like a basic concept that Forge has this uh, orb that basically tells him uh, Fissures, fractures, the world's breaking. So they go to these coordinates on the Earth and they uh, solve problems. Seems like a very simple premise for a hero team and the art is freaking fantastic. I'm also uh, really getting to Sage. I really didn't know anything about her. Um, I was on active duty when she was a thing, so I was barely aware of her existence. But I've been reading those comics uh, and... Um, I like that era, so this is kind of like a callback to that Claremont, um, Alan Davis era from like 20 years ago that I didn't even know existed until like last month. And also, um, uh, I kind of forgot that Deadpool is different in the comics than the movies. Like the comics, he's all about money, um, but like that's barely a thing in the movies at all. Um, but anyway. Uh, there is criticism. Uh, nobody's above it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the direction they're going in. Quite frankly, I try to avoid their content right now. It's just not for me, and it makes me aggravated. I like things. I like to like things. I think they have been financially incentivized by the algorithm, by audience capture, to be overwhelmingly negative. I do see them try to do things that are positive. I saw 
a critical drinker promoting a movie called Kingdom, which wouldn't ordinarily be spoken about, but he was trying to spotlight it. And of course, you can roast stuff. It just feels like, I mean, at some point, do I even need to watch a video? There's a Star Wars video game. They're not going to like it, no matter what. Even if it's just like a Joe Schmo average open world game, it's got to be terrible. Um, so that to me is very boring and not worthwhile. But this, this type of, this is shit. Oh, he made like the most mild Facebook dad jokes. He's, what did he said? He's just sort of a racist or something like that. That just sounds like he isn't. If, if that's your great claim to fame. But um, you are filth. If I saw you in real life, I'd spit at your feet. Just stop. Stop. I'm trying to avoid this type of content because I don't find any value in it. There's a huge difference between being annoying and being evil. Uh, what do I see as the future? I mean, they'll pretty much be doing this as long as it's lucrative. Uh, I mean, while a lot of these people are just making just kind of just McDonald's money, some of them are making some real good, like, surgeon type of money. Like, surgeon with a practice type of money. So, wh what are they going to do? Oh, Zach doesn't like my content. <laughs> Let me change it so I make hundreds of thousands of dollars less per year. It's not going to happen. I try to avoid it. My issue is that I can't avoid it right now. And it becomes very frustrating. It's in my comments. So my, oh, I got Mark Millar. He's here. Okay, he's on this channel. Cool. What's this guy doing here? This guy who I used to like who just screams everything. God, I listened to like three minutes of a 10-minute video. It was just three minutes of screaming. And not even like funny like, I like a lot of different types of humor. I like Chris Farley. But, like, with Chris Farley, there were jokes. It wasn't just, like, keyboard, cell phone, charger. Like, it's just, just saying anything. And and this, 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 this person lives in a house where they cut a rectangle into the exterior because they're too stupid to figure out how to get inside. And then they cut out a rectangle and then they put a different rectangle that's the same size and they put hinges. Like, you're just saying things that are completely neutral, but you're saying it like it's the most negative, idiotic thing in the world. Uh, I don't find that entertaining. But it's a huge difference between I don't like this content and you are evil. I don't think I've said anything that can't be like rolled back. You call someone a Nazi, there's no pulling that back. You know what I mean? But this is, <laughs> you are filth. If I saw you in real life, I'd spit at your feet. <laughs> I like how even in this guy's fantasies he's still a pussy <laughs> oh my gosh so uh anyway uh i will i mean i'm gonna try to just avoid content and creators where i don't like their stuff currently even though i've loved it in the even recent past for some of them but god damn it is very hard to escape some of these guys because they're just like on every fucking channel and they're in my fucking comments well, their phrases are, so it's like, can I just be on my own reservation? Anyway, uh, still time to order Impossible Stars 2, Jawbreakers Forever, First Kill. They have been printed. They haven't been received by the Fulfillment Center yet. There's still time. And then, uh, where is it? Capture a Kill. This is an awesome book. Uh, I'm almost, yeah, I'm almost completely done with this campaign. I mean, it's a pretty simple premise, so I'm just going to add art from the cover and some interior pages. All the art is done. It just has to be lettered and uh, pre-pressed, and it's ready to go. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.